It's time for another edition of our Cracked Rackets College Tennis Power Rankings. The results we've seen this season have broken my brain. The 2020 season has really been a crapshoot thus far. Beyond the top two of USC and UNC, it really does seem that teams ranked 3 through 15 can all beat each other on any given day. Here are my top eight teams heading into another week of college tennis. Coming in at number eight this week, the 14-3 and three Buckeyes of Ohio State. Why did I pick Ohio State over the rest of the teams? It's simple. As we always say, context matters. Yes, Ohio State lost recently to both Georgia and Stanford, but they were the first matches the Buckeyes have played outdoors, and honestly, I imagine they haven't practiced much there either. They still have wins over Texas A&M, Texas, Wake Forest, and UNC, and it would be foolish to write the Buckeyes off this early in the season. Coming in at number 7 this week, the Texas A&M Aggies. Without question, the Aggies win the award for best performance of the past week. Not only did they knock off South Carolina in a dominant 6-1 fashion, but they ended Florida's 16-match regular season win streak in the conference and in the process earned themselves a critical early season lead in the SEC standings. With their team slowly rounding into form, they've got the talent and depth to make some serious noise come May. Coming in at number 6 this week, the 11-4 TCU Horned Frogs. The Horned Frogs extended their winning streak to 8 dual matches after earning routine victories over both Tulsa and Tulane. Coach David Roditi decided to play around with his doubles pairings a little bit, using junior Max Kersbin with Alistair Gray for the first time this season. The move paid off as they won the doubles point in both matches. This team continues to hit its stride and possesses the talent to not only win their conference, but advance to another NCAA quarterfinal final this season. Number five this week, my 14-3 and three Michigan Wolverines. To anyone trying to diminish what the Wolverines have accomplished this season, just stop it. Yes, their wins over TCU, Columbia, A&M, and Texas came indoors, but what was Coach Steinberg supposed to do? Lose those matches on purpose? With that being said, if you think I'm going to jinx the bejesus out of my team by putting them in the top three, y'all are crazy. The commentator's curse is real, and I'll be damned if I'm the reason the Wolverines' run comes to an end. Number four this week, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Did I hope they would knock off USC and somewhat validate my continued early season praise? Yeah, I did, but alas, Mother Nature decided to intervene. Still, a 5-1 victory at Arizona State is nothing to slouch over. This team continues to show the sort of depth needed to make a late run come May. And let's be honest, even if they lose, the constant grief I get for my admiration of them will be much deserved. And you can all say, I told you so. By far, our most controversial selection this week comes at number three, as we went with a hypothetically healthy Baylor Bears team. Now, did I go with this answer partially because I couldn't justify any other team at number three, and also because I'm sick of getting trash-talked by a certain Baylor Bear? Yes, I did. However, with the parity we've seen in Division I men's college tennis, ask yourself this question. If Baylor was fully healthy, how many teams in the country would you confidently pick to beat them? For me, the answer was only USC and UNC, and that's why they're number three this week. No change for the UNC Tar Heels this week as they'll line up at the number two position once again. It would be shocking to me if the Tar Heels drop more than two points in any match they play throughout the rest of the regular season. They get both Wake Forest and Virginia at home and have two full days off before traveling to Durham to face a frisky Duke team. The biggest question for them moving forward, how much longer will the number two doubles team of Kiger and Sondergaard be ranked ahead of number one Blumberg Cernok in the ITA rankings? And your number one team in our Crack Rackets Power Rankings for the third straight week is the national indoor champion USC Trojans. Coach Brett Macy's roster currently has five players inside the ITA top 30 in singles, as well as three top 55 doubles teams. Upcoming matches against UCLA, Texas, and Baylor are certain to test the Trojans, but until someone knocks the national indoor champs off, USC will remain the team to beat in these power rankings. For a more in-depth look at these power rankings, be sure to go check out my article on our website, CrackedRackets.com, to hear recaps of all of the week's action. Be sure to listen to our mini-break college tennis roundtable episodes. And, of course, like, rate, subscribe, review to this video on our YouTube channel. You can find that at CrackedRackets. But for now, these are our college tennis power rankings, folks. See you next week.